favorite nurse Jasmine and I'm back today with another video. Today's video is going to be day 3 of 12 days of nursemas. If you are new to my channel and you have no idea what 12 days of nursemas is, it is basically vlogmas for nurses. Real simple, huh? So, it's something that I created as a way to give you guys 12 consecutive videos in a row all leading up until Christmas. Since I am a nurse and that's what my life mostly revolves around, including the fact that I'm an FMP student. I thought it would only be appropriate. So I am going to have a lot of vlogs, but I'm also going to have a lot of sit down videos, a lot of routines, some shopping videos, as well as a couple of giveaways. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure that you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that way you never miss a video and you don't miss your chance of winning some goodies. If you are unaware, I do have an online store. I'll link it below. It is full of nursing merchandise that you guys would love as well as I have an e-guide on how to survive your first year as a nurse. And if you haven't picked that up, check that out as well. So, as you guys know, I am an ICU nurse. As an ICU nurse, there is a lot of procedures done at the bedside that a lot of other nurses don't get to experience just because of the acuity level that you work in. So when I say acuity level, it is just the amount of care that your patient requires. So ICU, they need a lot of care. A lot of things are wrong, a lot of things are going wrong, and it is very easy for them to go either way. Which means we get to do a lot of procedures that a lot of other nurses don't get to experience on a daily basis. Not saying that they never experience it, but they just don't experience it the way we do. So I'm going to share with you guys top five procedures that I like to do at the bedside. So if you're interested, continue to watch. Okay, so before we start my top five, I do want to let you guys know I am going to give you the NG tube trick. So I did mention in one of my last videos that I went and dropped an NG tube that um, ER nurses and PCU nurses unsuccessfully attempted to do. I think there was a total of seven tries and nobody was able to get an NG tube in her. Went in, dropped it because I had an amazing preceptor named Carlos who is a phenomenal nurse. He knows every freaking thing. He's like the walking, talking medical book, right? And he taught me a trick and you have to stay around until the end of the video to learn the trick. Okay? Okay. So starting with number one, there should be no surprise. I like to participate in intubations. Intubations is when somebody is in respiratory distress or you want to protect their airway um, or they have coded, which means their heart has stopped or they have some kind of heart arrhythmia and they need a tube and they need to be placed on life support. Um, intubations are probably one of my favorite things to do. You get to uh, sedate paralyzed patients and I actually like taking care of intubated patients. Um, the vents and things like that, that's just one of the big parts of being an ICU nurse and it is one type of patient that I actually enjoy taking care of. Most of the time they come with a lot of drips, which is also my thing. Um, I like Levo drips, dopamine drips, Neos, Vaso, all that stuff. That's my thing. So the second thing that I like to do is cardioversion. Cardioversion is not really, I guess you can consider it a procedure, um, but you're basically using either a medication or a defibrillator. So it's when your patient has a really, really hard heart rate and you need to slow it down. So you can push this amazing drug called adenosine. It is not amazing, guys. Actually, it is a very scary drug and it temporarily stops your heart to try to convert your heart rhythm to normal sinus rhythm and if you're looking at it on a monitor once you push adenosine there is a long pause and that can go two ways with that long pause that long pause can continue to be a long pause and it's asystole and we have to do cpr because your patient is no longer alive or that long pause can convert itself into a normal sinus rhythm which is a normal heartbeat so number three is going to be assisting with central lines or dialysis catheters um, or art lines so any kind of line that we can put in a patient that allows us to give continuous care due to the patient needing critical monitoring is my type of thing as an ICU nurse I really hate when they come up from the ER with just one IV. Usually they come up to me if they have one IV, we're dropping two more. Um, because if they're, in their, if they're in the ICU, they're gonna require a lot of medications, a lot of antibiotics. If they are super critical and they're intubated and they need different kind of pressors, they have to have some sort of essential line or essential line or a pick line. So I, you tell me, oh, let's set up for essential line, let's go. Art line, give me that. That means I don't have to worry about my blood pressure cuff 
not reading. I don't have time for that, especially if I'm on pressors and dialysis line. That means they're either going to get traditional dialysis. Usually if we're inserting them, they're not chronic renal failure and it's something that is acute, which means if they have low blood pressure, we might get to do CRT and I would love to do CRT as well. Um, any kind of line insertion, I like that. Okay, so surprisingly, number four is probably going to catch you guys off guard, but I actually like to redo my wound vex. Though I don't like wound care at all, I do it because it's so important um, in patients getting better. And I can personally say that I love wound vex. Wound vex are like blessings. Like if I was a nurse earlier in life, I wish I would have came up with the idea of a wound vex because they're amazing. And you don't have to continuously redress them and it is so cool to cut the big black piece of foam stuff it in your open wound seal it off correctly turn on your suction which is usually like 125 and just see all that foam just shrink and it becomes like a little bitty hole <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird I know for instance if it is an abdominal wound that has not healed it has needed serious INDs and most likely it's because like the patient is like diabetic and it's really hard for their skin and their wounds to heal um, instead of causing the patient so much pain by continuously packing it and looking for tunneling and doing what to dry them packing things like that that's going to cause more pain and cause them to be so much more uncomfortable and them to absolutely hate you you can do wound vex and i love when doctors order wound vex and when it's appropriate it is just a lifesaver and it helps the patient so much and wounds look so beautiful once you take the wound back off once they're no longer leading it's like it's amazing so number five should go as no surprise it kind of goes along with the idea of number one when a patient is intubated sometimes it causes for them to need cpr which we call the code blue i actually love participating in codes i like acls protocols sometimes acls protocols don't work um and you guys i love the communication between everybody bouncing ideas off um it's a patient that you have no idea who they are and you're getting like a full history head to toe assessment everything you need to know about the patient within like two minutes and you're like okay what are your labs and you're spitting off information and everybody's throwing off ideas and you're doing everything that you can to bring this person back and you get them back i i don't know i just love codes that's probably why i love being an icu nurse um and it's like an organized chaos is what i like about it everybody has a role to play communication is where it's supposed to be when you're working with a good team hmm. And uh, yeah, it's I, I love participating in code, so those are my favorite as well. Those are my top five bedside procedures that I actually love participating in and I love doing. Um, and it is something that if you are interested in being an ICU nurse, you will be exposed to every single thing that I just mentioned to you. Um, I do want to give one honorable mention, and it is something that I actually don't really get to be a part of um but that is the placement of peg tubes so peg tubes gi tubes feeding tubes mickeys whatever you know them by they're all the same thing Once in the icu they are done at the bedside they don't take them down to the or to do it it's something that's done at the bedside however the gi doc usually has a gi team they bring all their equipment in and you as a nurse you do absolutely nothing you sign no paperwork you get no consents it is done entirely by the gi team but to actually see it because i'm one of those nurses i'm nosy i'm like i'm in the room i want to see what you're doing to my patient um but to see them done at the bedside is freaking awesome my sister has a mickey tube and um to see how her procedure was actually done since I, when i was very little i don't remember her getting it um I love those as well. So the one procedure that I actually don't like participating in is chest tube placements. They look so painful. Your patients most of the time they're awake. No matter how much sedation you give them and pain meds you give them. It is just a rough procedure to be a part of and it's even worse for the patient. It is something I really don't like doing. I don't mind taking care of chest tube patients and once, once they have their chest tubes like walking them around, ambulating them, doing all that jazz, taking them out. I actually like to participate in that but actually putting them in is just not, it's not my thing. I would prefer to let someone else help put them in and then I'll take care of them after that. Yeah, chest tubes are just not my thing. So finally, what you guys have been waiting for is the infamous NG tube trick. It is really easy, really simple. And this is why I kind of didn't mention it when I briefly talked about it in a vlog. And that is 
um, you take your NG tube. <laughs> I'm acting like I have one. I don't have one. But you act like this is this is my NG tube. And um, you don't have to bend it, tip it, flip it, none of that, none of that. You just put a lot of lube on it. Yes, it is lube, people. Be adults. <laughs> you soak the thing in lube. So some patients like to do the water sipping. Um, if they prefer to do that, that's fine. I don't mind them doing that. But honestly, for me, it is just better if they swallow when I tell them to. Um, you do have to be a little bit aggressive. So you put your hand behind their head and you tuck their head all the way to their chin. So once you see them, once you see them this way, you literally have to like push their head down into their chin. So it, it basically closes off their ability to um, swallow it and it goes into their lungs. So you just take the NG tube, you take their head. I apologize in advance. I'm like, look, it's not going to be comfortable. It is going to be painful. Um, the best thing you can do is just swallow. So um, I am going to push your head down a little bit hard, but I'm not going to hurt you. So you push their head into their chin. It's completely into their chest. You take the NG tube and you start to advance it like you learned in nursing school. And then as soon as they start to like that, <laughs> it's like a cough gag type of thing. It's like a mixture of both. Um, you tell them to swallow, but then you start to turn it to the right. So this is their head. I'm right handed. So I go in this way and you just turn it. And as you're turning it, for some reason, the motion, I don't know the science behind it. Like I said, I learned it from my preceptor. I don't even know if there is science behind it, but they start to kind of do the choke gag. You start to turn it and then tell them to swallow. Um, sometimes they try to force their head back up. It's a natural reaction. That's why you kind of have to have like a good grip behind their head or you can have someone helping you. Um, and do not allow them to move because like I said, you don't want it to go down into the lungs. And then once you get maybe past like the first three coughs, it's going to be, it's going to drop in the right place. You're going to be in the belly. You'll see GI contents come out. If you have like a small bowel obstruction, be ready for that because it comes out super, super quick. Um, sometimes they throw up. Be prepared for that. Have an image of space in front of you. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's the trick. It is just really holding pressure down a lot of lube and then it's a turn to the right um or if you're left-handed turn to the left i can't do anything with this this hand it doesn't really function well so <laughs> i have no coordination in that left hand so that is it to the ng tube trick the next time you have to drop an ng tube try it tell me if it works if it helps you i can honestly tell you guys ever since i've learned this trick i have never dropped an ng tube in the lungs let me knock on some wood somewhere so i don't jinx myself but yeah they always go into the belly. They always go to the right place. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I, ho I hope you guys are enjoying 12 Days of Nursements. Also, don't forget to follow me over on the gram. Um, as well as don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And until the next vlog, I'll see you hence tomorrow. Bye. Motivate. 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 Motivate.